Pandit Gopi Krishna was born in 1903 in Geru, a small village in Kashmir. He learned at an early age that self-discipline and meditation might be the key to a higher state of life. At the age of 34, after 17 years of faithful meditation, this divine energy inherent in all mankind was awakened and elevated him to a superconscious individual, opening other channels of perception in the brain. This knowledge is the same perennial wisdom attributed to Jesus, Moses, Mohammed, Krishna, Buddha, and a score of others. He leads a simple life, devoting his energies to Kundalini research. His son, Jagdish, brought Joseph Dupong to his birthplace. You're the, you're the oldest son of Pandit Gopakrishna. And this is uh, a little village called Geru. And this is the house where the Pandit Gopakrishna was born a little over 73 years ago. Yes, that's right. I can't help comparing the same situation where Jesus was born. The scenery and the setting is almost the same. The cows, the chickens, the animals, the mud, and the very simple life. You know, when you see some of these little boys around, you can't help thinking that about 70 years ago, he was, he was just one, yes. one of these little boys, like yes, muddy yes. and dirty I mean, and uh, playing with the chickens and the cows. Something and like that. Since I have seen here, there's been very little change, except that this, this house has been rebuilt. This, has, this is pretty new, uh, right? Well, uh, maybe 15, 20 years. 15, 20 years ago. But he was actually on this corner here where he yes, was born. Yes, that's right. Where this on the corner there. Right over here. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's the peace about this place. Yes. It's this Don't you feel so? Oh, it's incredible. Mm -hmm. Pandit Gopi Krishna ji and friends, the Kundalini movement uh, is of uh, tremendous importance uh, for the future of the human race. Of course, Pandit ji has been speaking to you about Kundalini for the last few days and it would be presumptuous for me to go into any detail on this except to say that uh, although the, the Kundalini has been important always, I think the present is, is, is a juncture of crisis for the human race. Science and technology have given man tremendous power. But power, the Shakti, can always be used for good or for evil. And uh, uh, if it is used for benign purposes, it is possible through this power to abolish uh, poverty and want and ignorance and disease and illiteracy from the face of the earth. But if used for malign purposes, it will abolish not only the human race, but probably all life on this planet. Now, it can be argued that there are billions of planets with life, and therefore perhaps it won't make terribly much difference if life ceases on one planet. Perhaps from the cosmic point of view, that may be correct, but from our point of view, certainly that is not an acceptable proposition. <laughs> but there is no doubt that it is with the works of Pandit Gopi Krishna that the concept of Kundalini has once again become clearly focused in the, in the uh, mind of the human race in our day and age. And it is extraordinary what a wide and deep impact his books have had all over the world. And the research project of which he made mention, which I set up, was in the National Institute of mental health and neurosciences in Bangalore, where you have neurologists and neurosurgeons, psychologists, psychiatrists, and philosophers. And we got them all together. We have a, an 11 or 12 man governing body uh, with Panditji on it, which is uh, the guiding uh, body for this project and which can be unique. 
I welcome you as a, as shall I say, a fellow seeker, as a person who is deeply interested in the, in the uh, concept that you have uh, gathered here to study and who has deep regard for Pandit Gopi Krishna and all that it is that he is trying to do. I am sure that you will benefit considerably from this visit and I only hope that uh, with Panditji's blessings, more and more such gatherings will be held, not only in Kashmir, but elsewhere in India and the world, and that the Kundalini movement will sweep to a triumphant conclusion before the end of this century. Thank you. If we found the mode of transportation fascinating, what must the Kashmiris have thought of these exuberant Westerners exploring their exotic sites? We traveled many miles to never before seen places and on one unusual jaunt we came upon an ancient Hindu temple where it is said the most amazing psychic phenomena occurs. Okay, why can you just lift up with 11 fingers, not 12, not 13, not 6? People have 12, we'll get it, it is not, it will not come up. No, but it has to be exactly 11 people yes. plus the stone it surely come makes up. it 12. Surely come up. So there's a psychic After some discussion, we finally got the idea of what happens. It seems that if 11 people place one finger each under a stone weighing about 90 pounds and repeat the word ka, which means 11 in Kashmiri, the stone will rise quite easily. Some of the local men agreed to show us the phenomenon, and we watched in amazement. But when we tried with 10 or 12 or any other number but 11, it just didn't work. Remarkable indeed. No, 11, 11 only, move back. It was sad to see these sadhus smoking dope. It is their belief that they can reach heaven by these artificial means. You can look among the millions of drug users around the world today, and you will not find one who has reached higher consciousness in this way.